Top of the morning to you gamers, it's me, your boy Waddles. Welcome back to the Minecraft Guide, episode number three now. Season three, episode three. I like it. Today's episode is all about caving. The first time, caving is big dangerous. There are some big tips that you're going to want to know if you've never caved before. If you actually have never caved before, that's kind of crazy. Uh, Welcome to Minecraft. It's a pretty cool game. It's a great game. But I, I have a feeling most of you have caved before. Anyways, take a look at this. Boom. It's messy. It's really, really full. We're going to actually fix that right away at the start by turning the single chest into a double chest. Double chests in Minecraft are about the best thing in the world. Boom. There we go. We'll reset our spawn right there. And now we have so much more room. We can make this so much more clean but not right now because i don't care about it in between episodes i've been harvesting a lot of sweet berries take a look at this a stack in the inventory a stack right there 45 more that's a lot of sweet berries i've also been harvesting the sheep's wool we have 38 right now which is really good i think i'm gonna want to use wool on my starter house build whenever we get to it now we have a couple pieces of random raw meat i think i'd like to start off today's episode while we're preparing for caving by cooking this stuff at the campfire right here cooking things at campfires costs zero fuel cooking things in a furnace or a smoker costs fuel campfires are great for cooking things but you have to be around them or you have to have a hopper because they'll just drop things whenever they're done now i've also been shearing that hive uh, in between episodes i know i've been busy and i've made some big improvements to the wheat farm which i have harvested a few times as well i took some leaves from trees that i cut down previously and actually put them on the ground leaves make amazing bushes in minecraft in fact sometimes better bushes than sweet berry bushes which is kind of ironic then over here i added a step up and took my shovel and used it on the ground just like that to make path blocks path blocks are amazing for decoration now in my opinion the biggest path block tip that i could ever give you is random like not fully connected i mean fully connected paths do look good sometimes but over here i think this looks a little bit better i also decided to detail our farm with some torches light is good on a farm and trap doors take a look at this place a trap door on the ground open it and the fence connects to it it creates a really interesting looking bend in here we have lots of depth going on which is a really good thing to have that we'll talk about a little bit more when we're building now one more wheat is ready to go i like it boom two seeds that's perfect and one more piece of wheat now i actually haven't done any animal breeding we still have three or, or scratch that four animals in that pen total i will breed them maybe but not right now now it's time to talk caving preparation when you're caving you're going to want to bring some supplies with you what kind of supplies well there are really kind of three main categories category number one your tools you're going to want to have tools with you when you go into a cave the most important tools to have a sword and a pickaxe shovels axes those are not necessarily needed but nice to have category number two food you're going to want to have at least a half stack of any kind of food before you go into a cave. This could mean a half stack of sweet berries. This could mean a half stack of steak if you're crazy set. Just a half stack of food at least, at minimum. You're probably going to end up taking some damage while you're down in the mines. To offset that and to regen your health, eat. And this is exactly why we worked on farms in the last episode. Before you go caving, you definitely want to have a consistent and reliable source of food. We definitely have that. Now, I have these random pieces of meat that I think I'm actually going to bring with us into the caves today just to use them up. There's no point in saving them, so we might as well just get them out of the way, out of this messy storage area. The final things that you're going to want to bring with you into the caves are kind of a bunch of different random things. First off, torches. You want to have torches inside of the caves. Torches will let you light up the caves and let you see. I recommend going into a cave system with as many torches as possible. We'll start with like 37, that's a pretty solid amount. I also recommend bringing extra iron with you down into the cave system if you have extra iron. Always bring extra wood with you down into the caves and also always bring coal. Now, if you're early game going caving for the first time, kind of like we are today, you may not have iron. So we're actually just going to start tackling this thing with stone and then upgrade to iron a little later on. I want to show you that it can be done. So first things first, you got to find a cave. We found a cave last episode. It goes down right there, but it also goes down right here. We're going to go ahead and fix this up right here, make a little bit more of a staircase. That's going to be perfect. Now move into the cave system and be careful. Immediately start lighting things up. If you bring your light level up to above light level 8, you're going to be golden, and nothing will be able to spawn inside of your cave. 
Now, you could place your torches down the middle of the cave, just like I'm doing right here, and light everything up, or you could be a little bit more tactical. If you'd like, place your torches on the wall, one wall only though. That way, you'll be able to follow these torches to find your way out. So, over here, I put them all on this wall, which means if I follow the torches on this wall, eventually they will lead me to my exit point. Which brings me to the second thing that you should do in every cave. Mark your entrance. If you want to make your way back out the way you came from, you should definitely make where you came from very, very obvious. For me, this is pretty obvious. If I put a torch on this cobblestone, in fact, we'll like go overkill with the torches there. Two torches there and cobblestone, that's definitely not natural. I'll remember that that's where I came from. You could also just remember distinct features of a cave. So maybe you have like a waterfall, that's where you came in near. Well, then remember the waterfall. Pretty easy. Now, while caving, if you have access to iron, make a water bucket. Water buckets are big brain inside of cave systems. Lava exists down here, and lava is dangerous. If you can remove the lava, you definitely should remove the lava. Now, does this just keep going? Like, seriously? It does. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Now, once you've lit up a little bit of your cave, it's a good idea to backtrack and pick up the ores. That's right. Pass up the ores the first time you see them. Why? We'll go back to episode one. If you go back to episode one, yeah, you're gonna see that creeper incident. That's why, that's exactly why. By the way, before you go back to episode one, if you're going back, drop a like on this video. My pickaxe broke and I'm in a bad situation. It would really improve my mood greatly, big time, if you left a like on this video. Thank you very much. Now, no more lying. We have iron, so we're going to go ahead and upgrade to our very first iron pickaxe of the world. Ooh, that feels good. And then we're going to use the rest of our iron up on an iron sword. Iron swords are like a million times better than stone swords. Stone swords are just not that good at all. But did you see that? We were able to make a crafting table. Why? Because I brought extra wood with us down into the cave system. Having extra wood with you while caving is a huge, huge bonus. It's a huge benefit. If your pickaxe breaks and you have extra wood, well, easy. Make a crafting table, throw it down, make sticks, boom, new pickaxe. If you run out of torches while caving and you have extra wood, not a big deal. Make more sticks, boom, more torches. Having extra wood is one of the best things that you can have on you when caving. Now, when mining early on, do not pass up a single ore. Well, I mean, pass it up the first time and make it safe. Light everything up, then come back and take everything, even the coal. Sometimes eh, mining coal can be a little bit tedious because of the veins, they're kind of sizable and there's just not that much of a benefit. I mean, there's no coal armor. Coal doesn't really do any good for you other than smelting, but smelting is big early on. To help get yourself off to a solid, solid start in the world, you want to stock up on literally everything. Wood, cobblestone, even coal. Mine every single piece of coal that you find and everything else, but the coal always gets neglected, so I'm going to put a lot of emphasis on it. So let's see what we have. Just from those two veins of coal, we have over a stack of coal, and we have nine more iron. That's a pretty solid start. Now, I actually want to put a torch down there and go back and grab this crafting table. This is going to come with me. I don't want to have to make like a million crafting tables, so we'll just keep us on us. Now, let's go down here and see what else we have. Hopefully, this goes somewhere good. I see at least a little bit more iron, so that's good. Now, notice how the area around me is just lighting up as I move. That's thanks to this amazing thing called Optifine. Optifine also lets me do this. Boom. You can zoom in. Optifine is a free mod that you can download. It's for Java Edition only. What Optifine does is lets you zoom, which is really cool. Adds support for shaders, which makes your world look amazing. We're definitely going to take a look at shaders more often in the season. And Optifine improves your performance big time. Everybody Buddy, no matter how good your computer is, should have Optifine. Now, we took a lot of damage. We lost like half of our health. Don't let that happen. It's going to be hard to not let that happen when you don't have any armor. You'll need at least 24 pieces of iron, 24 iron ingots to make a full set of iron armor. That is our goal today. By the time we're done with today's episode, we're going to be Iron Man. Now, I'm going to look completely different. I'm going to look really good, if I'm being honest, because we're going to have a full set of iron armor. A full set of iron, that's a pretty low bar, being honest um definitely should be achievable if i don't achieve it then i failed you all big time now uh i just realized i broke one of my first rules of caving mm -hmm. i'm gonna do that a lot and yeah you're gonna be face palming yep that's gonna happen i didn't light this area up then you see that's exactly why i intended to not light it up yep exactly now creepers they're interesting we've already seen a creeper before if you have an iron sword it's gonna take three hits to take out a creeper 
If you have a creeper and you get near it, you're gonna notice that it starts expanding. That's because it's gonna blow up. That's pretty straightforward. Small brain info right there, but I mean, hey, you never know. And don't let the creeper blow up when it's right next to you. If you do and you have no armor on, you're done so. Now, not that big of a deal. If you're not near lava, you'll be able to get back to the spot and get all of your stuff, but if you're near lava, your stuff is just gone. Creepers will calm down and I, I guess like stop trying to explode if you do one of two things. Option number one, break the line of sight. Move around a corner and the creeper is going to chill out. Option number two, move away. Just back up from the creeper and it's also going to calm down. If you can do both, you're like super golden, but you don't have to do both. Hey, I also forgot to say zero deaths. Zero deaths is the goal this season. Uh, when we die the first time, it's going to be a terrible, sad moment and we're gonna remember it forever because it'll be the only time it happens and there's a skeleton over there i am freaking out skeletons are terrible skeletons are like the worst creature in minecraft very very bad we're gonna just make a bunch of torches by the way but yeah there's a skeleton over there there's a big split in the caves we're gonna end a baby zombie too that's wonderful that's wonderful baby zombies they're demons uh we're gonna go back and just get iron and figure out our plan of action you know what? While we're safe, let's do this. Iron check. How much? 26. Oh, we already have enough for a full set of iron armor. We could quit here, but we're not going to quit quite yet because I'd like to get more. But that brings me to an interesting point. Uh, with caving, don't push it. I feel that when I like start to get really lucky and have like a lot of good things on me, that's when I start to slip up and have bad things happen to me. If you're in a really good spot, don't feel bad about bailing out on the cave, going back to the surface and dropping your stuff off, or even better, just making a chest and dropping your things inside of that chest. If your chest is in a safe area, meaning an area with zero creepers around, then it's going to be safe. It's going to be good. If you end up dying, well, then you can just find that chest again and grab your stuff out of that chest. It might be a good idea, if you decide to do the chest concept, to write down the coordinates of that chest. It would be really, really bad to put all of your good stuff in a chest and then lose the chest forever. Now, uh, water in a cave. Water is interesting. It can be both your best friend because it'll keep things away from you. Things don't move through water very easily, but it can also be your worst enemy because it's hard to move through water. I like to block off water when in a cave system. I hear that skeleton. I hear you, skeleton. I hear... Oh, you have an enchanted bow too. Nope, 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 nope. We're not dealing with that. We're not dealing with that. This is a safe area over... No, it's not safe. That's not safe at all. Okay, we're gonna go back this way. And you know what? Skeletons can't swim. We're gonna go this way. Boom. Water, it saved my life. It literally saved my life and made me a happy person. Yeah, skeletons, they're crazy dangerous early on before you have armor because their bow, uh, yeah, they can just hit you and they strafe around and it's annoying, it's terrible, worst thing in the world. Don't mess with the skeletons. If you can avoid them early on, then avoid them early on. That would be a pretty good, solid idea. How am I going to deal with that skeleton with the enchanted bow where I need to exit? <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good question. That's great. Ooh, our first piece of gravel. How special. I love it. Gravel is amazing for two reasons. Reason number one, coarse dirt. Reason number two, concrete. All right, so we have a stack of iron now. That's pretty good. Now, it's a really good idea to keep extra blocks on your hotbar at all time. I have a cobblestone on my hotbar. I don't care about cobblestone. I can place as much of the stuff as I need. The cobblestone is ready for action on the hotbar. If I get into a bad situation, I can run, block off a corner of the cave, and hide in it like a champion. Would I ever do that? Of course not. You'll never see me do it. You'll never catch me do it in a million years. But uh, if I had to, I would be able to do it instantaneously. Now, I hear a lot of zombies. That is concerning, but also maybe promising. That could mean a zombie spawner is near here. If we had a zombie spawner in this cave system near our temporary, like, starter house, that would be crazy. That would actually give me a reason to come back to this area. It almost, uh, honestly, makes me want to dig around a little bit and see if we can find it. Now, when digging around and looking for something, I have a life hack for you. If you go over into your settings and then your accessibility settings, you can turn subtitles on. Subtitles are kind of cheaty in my opinion, but very useful. Check the subtitles. You hear the zombie noise, it says zombie groans, and then over that way, it's telling me that the zombie groaning is coming from this general direction. Now, that's not going to tell me exactly where the zombie groaning is coming from, but it's going to give me kind of a better idea but our pickaxe broke which means it's time for a new iron pickaxe which means it's time for a furnace we're gonna go ahead and put let's say uh we'll put eight coal in no we'll put one coal we we only need like a little bit of iron we'll do that let that smelt up real quick and while we do that we're gonna clean up our inventory a little bit by making a bunch of blocks of coal if you have at least three separate piles of something in your inventory so like two stacks and a little bit more of coal 
Convert it into blocks. Iron, three, boom, perfect. I like it. Now we need more sticks. And boom, pickaxe number two, nice. You know what I just realized? I should have saved that first iron pickaxe. That was a special pickaxe and I let it break. How could I? Now let's see if we can find this cave. Are we getting closer? I can't really tell. You can tell if the noise is getting louder, but I, you know what? I think it is. I think it's getting louder. I think we're getting closer, maybe. Are we getting closer or are we, I don't know. I have no clue, honestly. That's why subtitles are here. You know what? I quit. I quit. It's fine. I don't, I don't care about the zombies today. Look, I'm just here for the cold, that's all. Now, uh, some people like to play with subtitles on, which is cool, but personally, I don't really like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back into the accessibility settings and just turn them off for now. We can always turn them on later if we need them. I kinda like the look of Minecraft without the subtitles. Now, let's go ahead and grab the iron, grab that iron for sure, this and this, and let's backtrack actually. We're gonna have to deal with the skeleton. We need to just face it. We have to get around, oh wait, no, not quite yet. There's more iron, hi, hi, hey, look at that. I have a new goal. We're leaving this cave system when we have a full stack of iron ore. That doesn't include these five right here. We need a solid stack. Then we can leave. Now, the skeleton that I saw before. Where is it? Is it? Uh, it would have been over there, I think. Unless it moved, which it probably did. It, there was one that way, right? For sure. But the scary one was over here. Can we find it? Um, or maybe... Maybe it just despawned. You know what? I'm gonna actually go out on a limb here and say it despawned. We're gonna block that off, let the water go away, go up here and light that up because I don't want anybody falling in on me, and we're just gonna carry on. I think we actually defeated that skeleton. Definitely indirectly, there's a creeper. Definitely indirectly, but it's defeated. Goodbye, creeper. You can go ahead and explode. Yeah, option number three with the creeper, just let it blow up. All right, so we have a skeleton that definitely followed us down a little bit. Mm-hmm, right there. We have a little bit of a dark space too, though. We'll light it up. Keep dodging the skeleton. Nice, you're small brain. You go away. Go away. Weakest skeleton ever. Terrible job, skeleton. Terrible. Usually skeletons aren't that easy, but yep, that's kind of how I take them out. They're really, really just terrifying early on. As you can probably tell, I haven't had the best track record with skeletons. Yep, just haven't. And emeralds, ooh, that means we're in a mountain biome. That's awesome. You know what? We're gonna light this up and we're gonna get those emeralds. They're not gonna really help us early on right here. They're not that useful, but they're emeralds. I want the emeralds for sure. And there's a lot of coal in here too. And is that a mine shaft? Oh, that's a mine shaft. This is like the best cave ever. Like, wow, a mine shaft in the first cave? I mean, it, it's not unheard of, but that's crazy. Now, mine shafts are kind of dangerous, so we're not gonna go in it. We need armor first, for sure, but you know what? I am gonna write these, or just remember them, 130, negative 130. That's pretty easy. Mine shafts are dangerous because they are the home of the poisonous spider. Poisonous spiders poison you. Mine shafts are also just uh, basically big mazes with mobs at every turn. So yeah, we're not gonna go in there today. We'll come back later, but that's amazing. That's a really, really good find. All not too far from where we started to. That is awesome. Mining at night is a good thing. Currently, I have no clue if it's daytime or nighttime, but if it were nighttime, mob spawns would be split between the cave system that I'm currently in and the surface. What does that mean? In simple terms, that means less mobs inside of the cave system that I'm currently in. That's something that I love the sounds of. There's kind of a misconception about mining at nighttime, not too sure where it came from, but yeah, mining at nighttime is a good thing, and hey, more emeralds, that's amazing. Now, emeralds are an interesting ore. If you're trying to find emeralds, you're gonna need to find a mountain biome. They only generate inside of mountains. Well, now, where did that creeper go? I knew you were here. I knew you were existing somewhere. You're gonna go away, creeper, no. But yeah, mining at nighttime, it's a really good idea. I have no clue if it's day or nighttime. You can find out if you go back to the surface or if you make a clock. But to make a clock, you're going to need gold, which coincidentally is right here. But what's not right here? Redstone, the other clock ingredient. Also making a clock early game, I mean, you could do it. It's not really a waste of materials. Redstone, pretty easy to find. Gold is already useless, but yeah, don't don't really worry about it. Uh, zombie waiting right here. Goodbye, zombie. Mm, I'll see you later. See you never. And then there was a creeper over there, but I think the creeper is stuck. Now, I'd like to move back over this way and get rid of this water if possible, definitely possible, and then light this up and start mining out these things. There's another block of emeralds right over here, uh, somewhere, I think. Thought I saw more emeralds. Yep, right there, perfect. And then lots of iron. This is definitely gonna help us get out of here. And some lapis too. Lapis is great for enchanting. 
Not much else, maybe building if you like the block, but enchanting. Coal over here, always take the coal, and even more iron. We're gonna have a stack of iron in no time, easy. Oh, there's actually like a bunch of creepers over here. There's one right here, and then there's two down there, which is terrifying. I didn't mean for that to happen. Um, <laughs> uh, there's lava down there too. You know what? You know what? All this moving the book. Goodbye, creepers. You're gonna go to the lava. Goodbye. Now, this cave is really interesting. There's a bunch of weird holes and then this steep drop. If we get really low in a cave system, we have the chance to find diamonds. We are probably uh, definitely really low currently. There's a chance that we could find diamonds down here. Here's a big brain move for you. Java Edition, press F3, look over on the right-hand side of the screen. You see that middle chunk? Targeted block is what we're looking at, 167.7, negative 121. Below that, Minecraft andesite. What does that mean? That means we're looking at andesite. Andesite is under that lava right there if I were to take the lava out and stand right here look at the same block it'd be andesite over here stone uh, andesite again stone andesite uh-huh okay so stone and andesite under the lava not too interesting but check this out uh, right there iron ore what am I getting at well if there were diamond ore underneath that lava it would say diamond ore we don't have any diamond ore right there, so we don't have to worry about it. But if it did say diamond ore, we'd take the lava out, we'd find diamond ore, profit. Pure profit. It would be amazing. Now, when mining or caving down low, you're going to end up finding big strips of lava. I recommend dumping water on them and following them. Sometimes they'll lead you to diamonds. Not always. There's no, like, true relation, but sometimes. Also, they're just easy caves to travel because they're usually pretty open or you just have to dig out like a block on the ceiling, which isn't a big deal. Now, do we have any diamonds over here? I don't think so. If we don't get lucky with diamonds today, it's not the end of the world. Now, I've actually covered quite a bit of cave now. I'm actually going to backtrack and pull out all of the ores. If I find anything cool, I'll let you know. Oh, but real quick, if that F3 menu isn't showing up, try holding it on shift and pressing F3. That might make it pop up. Mission success. I think I'm in the clear now. I think this is all cave system that I have. Oh, okay. Maybe not. Maybe not quite yet. But I think I've mostly gone through all of the cave that I lit up that I passed the ores in, which means I just need to find the exit. Now, I'm actually usually pretty decent at finding where I came from. But if you get lost in a cave system, my big tip, just make a staircase upwards. It could take some time if you're short on iron, but uh, not to flex or anything. Not too short on iron now. Look at that. Two stacks of the stuff. I'm doing like crazy good, which is so, so much better than I thought I would do. Look at this. Almost like literally two stacks now. Mm-hmm. Yep. We're doing good. Now, hopefully I can find the exit. I know what it looks like, obviously. I just don't remember where it is. I'm not sure if this is the way or if the way is the other way, but I'm pretty sure this is the way, I think. Oh, for sure. Take a look at that. Boom, leads right over to here. And this other part of the cave that I never even ended up caving. Go away. Okay, you know what we're going to do just to make it safer for next time? We're going to light the entrance up just a little bit. I'll take these ores for sure. And yeah, that's a dead end. Okay, yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. Cave trip number one successful. And it's daytime too. But we've been in the cave system for a while, which means there could be mobs up here waiting for me. Uh, it actually looks pretty clear, which is actually crazy surprising. That's awesome. And take a look at our food farm. It is going crazy. That's the first thing that I need to do. We need to harvest all of this. I should probably harvest that, chop down these trees, and definitely get this iron smelted up. Wow, that's kind of crazy. This farm is actually almost fully planted out, which is really, really exciting. That's awesome. Now, before we do anything else, I'd like to talk about Minecraft barrels for a second because they're cool looking and they're great for storage. We need more storage, just plain and simple. I think what I'd like to do is put a barrel over here and inside of this barrel, we'll put all of our farm focused things. So wheat, extra sweet berries, you know, things like that. This barrel over here will help us big time when it comes to staying organized. If you can stay organized, you can actually see what you have. And if you can see what you have, you know exactly what you can do. So for now, all of that type of stuff will sit over here. Now, let's talk about smelting ores up. You could definitely throw your iron inside of a normal furnace and smelt it up. That would 100% work. But there's a better way to do things. That better way is also actually pretty achievable. It's pretty cheap. To do this better way, you're going to need a little bit of iron and some smooth stone. To get smooth stone, you're going to need to put stone inside of a furnace and cook it up. 
While we wait for that smooth stone to cook up, this is what we have now. We have a couple stacks of cobblestone, which is going to be great for our starter house, a tiny, tiny bit of andesite, and a little bit of gravel. Lots of this stuff, we don't talk about that stuff though. In terms of ores, here's what we have. 11 blocks of redstone and two more, two blocks of lapis and four more. We have three emeralds, which is actually surprising, did not expect that at all, and six gold ore. Not too worried about the gold right now, so I'm probably just gonna leave it in the storage. But then again, I might smelt it up. The efficient way to smell your ores up is inside of a blast furnace. To make a blast furnace, you're gonna need a normal furnace, a little bit of iron, and some smooth stone. This right here is a blast furnace. A blast furnace looks so, so clean, and it gets even better once you start putting things inside of it. Check this out. So we put the iron inside of it. Look at how quick it smelts up over here. Meanwhile, over here, it smelts up pretty slowly, like that. Mm -hmm. Big difference. Blast furnace all the way. This time, in between episodes, I'm not gonna do much. I'm really just gonna smelt up the iron and maybe the gold as well. Get us all set up so we can actually make that suit of iron armor and do a little bit more caving. Now, it's time for the comment of the day. Today's comment of the day comes from Evelyn M. The question is, how do you keep yourself motivated and creative with Minecraft? Honestly, that's a tricky one. Sometimes I seriously lose a lot of motivation, especially lately. I've just kind of been feeling off. Really, the big thing in terms of motivation is breaks. I find that if I play Minecraft like constantly too much in a day, then the next day I'm like super burnt out and I'm not really into it. I don't want to do anything with it. This is probably really the case because I've been playing this game like consistently, like a bunch, like a lot, a lot, probably more than I've been meant to for like four years straight now. For me, the key to consistent creativity is breaks. Also, trying new things. If you're getting tired of Minecraft, but you don't want to be tired of Minecraft, try doing something completely different. Build in a different biome, build in a different style, build different farms. Trying different things out will not only get you better at the game, but it might make you a little bit more interested in the game again. But that does it for this episode of the Minecraft Guide. Today, a big shout out to my patron, Archangel. Thank you so much for the support. Smash that like button, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next episode very soon. Goodbye, everyone.